Good, good morning, good morning once again. Welcome to to my home. Um, if you've seen it advertised, this uh, today's message is uh, I am a child of God. So let's just uh, start with a, a quick prayer. Um, so may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Yes. May the words of my mouth. The reading today, we're going to do a reading, and it's going to be Mark 10, um, verses 13 to 16. Uh, I'm going to read out of the Bible because, um, for some reason, they keep updating the way they, they put in the message. So I'm going to stick with this one. So Mark 10, verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them and blessed them. So we give thanks to God for the words. What I thought we would do today is we would... Uh, compare some what I consider to be childlike characteristics and I'm sure you can think of others um, and I'm sure some of you could think of a, a shorter list um, but we're going to compare those with the, the, the qualities of a child of God. So the, the list are with childlike qualities are openness, trust, honesty, inquisitive, emotional, I have freedom of spirit, I have energy, no limitations and they love unconditionally and then the greatest thing of all there's an innocence about them so let's compare a child's characteristics with the characteristics of a child of god well first one openness kids will talk to anyone they'll talk to anyone in my shop we have on many occasions had little kids telling us stuff that the parents really would wish they hadn't. Uh, I always remember one in particular um, that this little child decided to tell us about her, her, his mum's toilet functions and his mum was so embarrassed, so embarrassed. You see kids just have an openness about everything, there's no taboo subjects with them and they'll talk to anyone. Now the thing is all of these headings come under uh, a little thing in brackets here and it says until until we teach them otherwise kids are open to everybody okay now as a child of God we need to be open to everybody so if you want to turn to um, um, Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 uh, I'm just very quickly going to run through uh, a message that Paul sent to them and it says this in, in verse 1 you know brothers that our visit to you was not a failure. I'm just going to say that's an openness there. You see, so many times in life we, 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 we want people to see that everything's wonderful and everything's fantastic. And he's saying to them, look, it wasn't a failure. You may have perceived it as a failure, but it wasn't. In verse 2, he goes on to say, we had previously suffered and been insulted in Philippi, as you know. But with the help of our God, we dare to tell you his gospel in spite of strong opposition. And then in verse 3, he goes on to say, For the appeal we made does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. This is openness. Straight away, he's saying, we're not tricking you. This is what we're doing. Verse 4, on the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We're not trying to please men, but God who tests our hearts. And then in verse 5 he says, you know we never used flattery. You know we never used flattery. Nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from men, not from you or anyone else. We're here to serve God. Straight away he's laying it all out. Well, I'm sorry, we've come to serve God. We come as apostles of Christ who could have been a burden to you. In verse 7 it says, but we were gentle among you. Like a mother caring for her little children. We love you so much that we were delighted 
to share with you not only the gospel of God but our lives as well there's not us and them it's we're together because you have become so dear to us he says surely you remember brothers our toil and hardship we work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we were while we preach the gospel of God to you you are witnesses and so is God of how holy righteous and blameless we were among you who believed and then he goes on to say for you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children encouraging comforting and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory you've got to have that same openness it's no good pretending things are good kids don't pretend things are good I mean, you know they come in and they tell you everything and Paul's just done that he said you know what some people would say we're failures but we came to serve God and we treated you like we were your father and your mother and we were gentle with you then we need to have that same attitude we need to be open to telling people about our relationship with God not about the wonderful relationship that somebody else is having not about a relationship that we would imagine that we could have but about the one we're having about the problems we face and about the the wonderful things that God does are we open to telling people about our relationship with God remember in Ephesians 1 4 it says for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will you have a relationship with God how strong that is depends on you well my relationship with my kids with some is stronger than others with my grandkids some stronger than others with people that I know some stronger than others but God has adopted you into his into his family and that's a relationship that's worth telling people about next subject trust trust once again kids have a, a willingness to just interact with everybody with everybody until we tell them we beat it out of them or we tell them it's wrong they're just so open and they trust everybody I remember reading a story about a lady in a restaurant and, and a, she had a, a little baby and the little baby kept leaning over and trying to reach out and there was a, a very scruffily dressed man and she was trying to ignore him and trying to ignore him and eventually she thought we're going to go because she didn't like the way the baby was trying to reach out to this man so she got up and as she was going the baby sort of flopped out of her arms towards this man and the man caught the baby and they had a few moments together and then the man gave it, the, the child back to the mother and explained that uh, it, it had really um, it was a life-changing moment for him you know it was he, 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 because of his scruffiness nobody wanted to interact with him nobody wanted to have anything to do with him and yet the child just trusted implicitly that this man was going to look after him and that's what we need we need that willingness to interact with strangers I have a, a personal philosophy that says um, you know as a Christian I'm going to get hurt again and again and again because I'm going to be open with people and that means sharing things with them but when you share with people you hope that your trust is going to be reciprocated that they're going to take hold of your words and take care of them not just bandy them around it's that we don't tell people things to make them for reasons of gossip we tell people things so that we build up that trust in the same way as a child of God we also need to trust God in Proverbs 3 says this trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight don't trust your own understanding because the world is going to tell you things are one way 
You've just got to go for it. You've got to understand that God is there. He's there for you. In Jeremiah 17, it says, But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when he comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. But I like Isaiah. He says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Now I like that bit because it says he's my strength and my song. And there's a, a song, Blessed Assurance. And it's, this is my story, this is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. That's how I feel all the time. But there is another one, another song, and it's called, They'll Know We Are Christians. And it says this, one of the parts, of the, one of the verses says, We will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard each other's dignity and save each other's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. When we walk with each other hand in hand and when we no longer feel the need to condemn one another but instead preserve each other's dignity then we will be spreading the news of the, uh, that God is in our land not through our words but through our actions towards one another. Fear can drive us to live separately and have no unity in the kingdom no unity, no flourishing, no revival Remember Jeremiah 17. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in, him, is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. If we want to flourish, if we want the kingdom of God to flourish, then we need to start trusting one another. We need to start having one another's backs. We need to trust God. Psalm 56. When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. You want to know who to trust? God. You trust God and then, and then they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. And how do we trust? Honesty. Say what you see. This is what a kid does. A child in the natural says what it sees. If somebody's in a wheelchair, they'll ask them, why are you in a wheelchair? If someone's got a different colour skin, they'll say, why you got a different colour skin? If they, if, they, if, they, if they see something, they'll ask about it. It's an openness and an honesty. They're not trying to be to, to drive people down or put people down. They're inquisitive, which we'll come to later. But they always say it as they see it. They always say it as they see it. They never, there's no, they don't hide things at all, you know. They don't lie. It's something we teach them in the way we, 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 we interact with them. Remember, not all of these things are what a child is naturally. In my opinion, this is what a child is. Until we teach them differently. Colossians 3.19 says, Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices. Do you know how we're not supposed to lie to one another? We should say it as, it, as we see it. People shouldn't be offended if we, if we ask questions. I ask questions all the time um, when somebody comes in my shop and if I want to know something I ask questions not because I'm um, trying to put them down at all but I have an honest desire to know the answer to the question and so I ask it James 5 says this therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective 
but we do have to be honest whilst we're doing that. For whoever would love life and see good days, this is 1 Peter, must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. We have to be honest. Many years ago, um, I was at a, a meeting at a, a church and one of, the, a lot of the men there came and brought in these things called um, um, the bands, Wesley's bands. When he was setting up um, the groups, he brought out these rules. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them, but I'm going to read just a little bit for you. It says at the beginning, it says, The design of our meeting is to obey that, God, that command of God, confess your faults one to another. We have commit uh, the, with the faults, oh, sorry, and pray one for another that you may be healed. To this end, we intend. Now, I'm going to miss some of them. I'm just going to go to the ones that I feel are, are very apt. To speak each of us in order, freely and plainly, the true state of our souls. The true state of our souls. If you want to, people to, to pray for you and be a powerful prayer, then you have to be honest and say, this is where I am. This is where I am. With the faults we've committed in thought, word and deed, and the temptations we have felt since our last meeting. Later on it says, is it your, is it your desire and design to be on this and all other occasions entirely open? so as to speak everything that is in your heart without exception, without disguise and without reserve. Honesty. Thomas Jefferson said, Honesty is the first chapter of the book, Wisdom. We need to be honest with ourselves and those around us. You know, we've all done many things wrong and if somebody asks, I will tell you anything. My wife will tell you sometimes I'm, I tell, tell people too much stuff because I just want people, I don't want to be anything hidden. If there's, a, if there's anything hidden, I'm telling you now, the devil will use that. He will use that to make you feel guilty. He will make that to make you feel low. And if you confess everything and there's nothing hidden, he can't do that. You see, I have done so many wrong things but I have nothing to hide if you want to know anything about me you just ask and I'll tell you there's nothing to hide nothing at all I don't know who this is attributed to but it says the most free person in the world is the one who has nothing to hide nobody can have anything on you be like a child. Be honest. Be honest. You can see on the faces what they're thinking. The next thing on my list is zest for life. That's a, now I put in brackets we're willingness to try new things. You see, my daughter keep, takes my two grandkids out, and you, can see, you see them, and they're off down the paths, and then the next thing they're covered in muck and mud, and they're just loving everything that's around them. You see, kids love to see things, new things, fun things. Butterflies and slugs, they're all the same appeal to a child. And I'm sure many of us have got stories of, my brother ate worms. My brother's eaten this. My sister's done this. Oh, they've, ate, they've eaten this. The thing is, everything, everything is amazing to a child. They have just a, 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 an energy about them. You know, they want to try new things. They want to see new things. Well, here's a new thing for you, Revelation 3. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So right now, God's standing at the door for a new thing in your life. You want to be a child of God? Remember this, the mo most popular verse in the Bible, John 3, 16, for God's soul of the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. But God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. 
But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Going back to Jeremiah 17. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him. You want to be fruitful in this world? Trust in God. Try something new. Try something new. If, you've never, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, now is that time to be childlike. Embrace something new. Because God's waiting for you. Jesus is. He, he died on the cross for you. And right now he's waiting for you. And when you come to him, what do we get? Ephesians 5 tells us about the fruit of the Spirit. If you've not got this in your life, then I'm telling you, you need it. You need it. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. That's what you need. Remember, Jeremiah said, you have no worries because in the year of drought, you'll never fail to bear fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. But Ephesians also describes what we are. And I'm sure a lot of us will recognise more of these than the first list. It says... Sorry, Galatians 5. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord. You just don't like somebody. Jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. Those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Romans 6 says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Get that zest for life going. Have a willingness to try new things because what you're leaving behind is not that good. And what you're receiving is fantastic. He says well, we have treasure that brings great joy. I'm sure we know this. You, joy. As a Christian, we don't seem to have the joy of the Lord half the time. We're too busy thinking about this and worrying about that. Matthew 13 says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in, in his joy, he went and sold all he had and bought that field. For all that you possess... Christ is worth more than that. And if you give all of that up for Christ, you will still be fruitful where God has you planted. John 15 says, I have told you this. This is Jesus saying this. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And 1 Thessalonians 5 says, be joyful always. Be joyful always. Get that zest for life. That joy. I know at this moment in time it's hard to, to fathom where we are in life and what's going to happen. But you know what? I stand on the rock. I stand on the rock and I know where my joy and my peace is. And I say, that's where I'm going to be. That zest for life. That inquisitiveness. Kids ask questions constantly to, uh, to find out the answers. My oldest granddaughter is at the why stage. Why? Why? But I don't want to kill that. I want that to be good. I want her to be joyous and inquisitive and asking the questions. <coughs> See, kids want to know everything. They want to see everything and they want to touch everything. I know that because my granddaughter is supposed to be coming around in the afternoon and we just, well, Krista's just spent hours, I won't say baby-proofing the, the, the house because we can't really do it. But boy, it's like, 
we, we, everything's high, everything's high. If you could see everything's as high as we can, getting it off the floor. But the trouble is she can reach up higher now, so we're, we're still struggling a bit. But I encourage them to be inquisitive. I taught, I taught her how to open cupboard doors. I also taught her how to open the fridge doors, and that's a big mistake, don't do that. Don't do that. I taught her how to do light switches. And she wanted to be picked up constantly and to do light switches. We went shopping. And when we were shopping. Whilst we were shopping, sorry. I let her touch everything. We went around the store and I encouraged her to touch everything. We came to the brushes and I thought, feel the, feel the br bristles with the brushes. <coughs> <coughs> I want them to be inquisitive I want them to know I want them to enjoy life and eventually I want them to understand that Christ is the centre of that life and just so we don't leave her out I'm going to just talk about her mum Rachel my oldest daughter Rachel when she was little had a fascination with wherever we went she had to go to the toilet I don't know what it was, but everywhere we went, she had to go to the toilet. You went to the supermarket, you have to go to the toilet. You go to church, you have to go to the toilet. You went to somebody's house, I've got to go to the toilet. That was her fascination. That was her inquisitiveness. Now, some people would say it's nosiness, and it is. It is. But you know what? There's nothing... There's nothing as nice as watching my kids pull all the books off the bookshelves and empty all the cupboards. Um, well, one, because Krista's the one that's going to clean it up, probably. Um, but I just want them to have that zest for life, that inquisitiveness, you know. That, that inquiring mind. The bit in the Bible it says, ask, seek, knock. Do you remember that? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. If you don't look for it, if you're not inquisitive enough to look for it, then how are you going to receive it? God's waiting for you. But you've got to look. And you know what? When you look, you'll be given it. In my mind, this inquisitiveness is something that sometimes I feel is missing from the churches. Um, this zest for life, they just sort of go along, go along. But to me, a church is not meant to be a place where you go and sit and relax and do nothing. For a time, that's fine. A church is a place where you build up the body of believers. Where, the, the, where you have to ask yourselves daily questions that will build yourself up and build the body of, of, of Christ up, expand the kingdom. But you have to be honest. Remember the bands, these are the questions. These are the preceding questions may be asked as often as occasion offers. The four following at every meeting. These are four questions to ask yourself and to ask others. What known sins have you committed since our last meeting? What temptations have you met with? How were you delivered? What have you thought, said or done of which you doubt whether it be sin or not? If we don't ask the questions, how can we find the answers? If we're not open and honest with one another, we won't be building each other up. You see, the third question there was, how were you delivered? How did God save you from that situation? If you don't ask questions, you don't find out answers. Uh, many years ago, I used to be a welder. And there were rumours going around that there were going to be redundancies. Now me, I have an inquisitive nature. I've already said, I ask people in the shop about things, 
uh, you know I, I can tell you way too much about piercings and tattoos that I would really don't wouldn't want to know again but I know I know all of this because I am inquisitive and I ask so this the the the, the, the rumor went around that there were going to be redundancies now it must have been going around the factory for a while but I hadn't heard it so I was busy welding away and um, somebody popped their head through and said uh, there's talk that there's going to be people laid off um, oh we're going to have a big meeting about it we're going to talk about this we're going to talk about that me because I'm inquisitive and I want to know the same way I want to know if I've been a sinner and what to do about it but in this situation I wanted to know what was going to happen with my job so I took my helmet off I went to the office I said I understand there's going to be redundancies and he said there may be redundancies I said am I going to be one of them and the man opened his thing looked down the list and went no I, okay I went back to work put my helmet on and carried on I didn't have to worry about anything because I'm too nosy and I wanted to know and that's how we should be because I tell you what the rest of that factory spent weeks in fear of their jobs and I don't think in the end there were any redundancies but the fact of the matter is they feared for their, their job because they wouldn't just go and ask that question we need to know everything like the child like, like a child we need to know everything we need to know what it says in here we need to know what's happening in our churches in our congregations in our friends lives we need to know everything we need to see everything we need to see God working in our lives we need to recognize it going back to those bands how were you delivered you need to see that People need to bring that to you so that you can see God working. We need to touch everything. We need to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Remember, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. How do we ask? 1 Thessalonians 5. Pray continually. Two words, pray continually. Otherwise, you're going to have a very stressful time, which brings me to my next thing with kids. They're very emotional. They don't hide the feelings very well. When they're upset, they show it. There's no deception in them. I put temper tantrums to big smiles, but I have one granddaughter and she goes from and I'm gonna this is this is I'm gonna this is my saying she goes from hugs to shrugs so one minute she's doing this and the next minute say give us a hug not bothered not bothered she shows her emotions she doesn't want it she don't want it but we're very British and we don't really talk about our emotions and I am aware that time is marching on so um, maybe we're gonna draw this to a close a little bit sooner I'm going to just talk about emotions being British we it's one of the things we just we, we seem to want to hold in okay now I remember a man at a church we went to and every time God was mentioned Jesus was mentioned he would burst into tears you know because his emotions were getting the better of him because he remembered all the sins, all the things he'd done before and, and they weighed heavy on him and then when he saved there's a lightness, a joy and then you remember what you've done and it used, used to be crying every time you see he thought of the sins he'd committed against God you have to put them behind you Our emotions are peaks and troughs. It's like a roller coaster, it's up and down, high and low. Mountain top to deepest valley. You see, Moses came down from the mountain glowing. It says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, 
he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. That's a mountain top experience. But we British, we don't talk about these things. And we should. Because it lifts other people to know that God's working. David wrote, and everybody know, must know this, Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Amplified says it better. It says this, yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil. Ezekiel talks about a valley of dry bones. And there will be times in our lives where we have that valley of dry bones. There will be times in our lives where we, where we have great emotional stress. But there will also be times where we have great joy. Great joy. As British people and as Christians, we tend to hide them, not share them. People don't get to share in those great, wonderful moments. Let's share these joyous occasions um, when there's things to laugh at, let's laugh together. When there's things to cry at, let's cry together. Let's support one another in the in the in the in the valleys and raise one another up on the mountain top. That's what we need to be doing. Stop hiding our feelings. There's no need to it. There's no need to do it. Now I could go on, but I am aware that. The next few bits are sort of meld into one. So what I'm going to say is this. Um, I'm going to save this and we'll hopefully we'll just finish this off next week. Um, and we'll talk more about Father's Day. Uh, because in, in England, in Great Britain, it's Father's Day next week. Um, so if my kids are listening, um, this is the gentle reminder. Uh, if the kid, my kids are not listening, can somebody tell them? <laughs> um, a reminder won't hurt. And hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll come to, to the end of this next week and we'll move on to God the Father. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to end with a quick prayer. So Lord, we just ask that, uh, that as we, we, we walk through this, this earth, Lord, as the, we, we meet people, we meet strangers, let us be open to them, let us be honest. Let, 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 let's talk to them about our relationship with, with Christ, how he saved us, how, how we trust in him in the times, uh, in the valleys, how we rejoice when we're lifted high. Lord, give us that fresh, fresh zest for life. We ask, Lord, that uh, you show us your joy and your peace as we go through this coming week. Lord, we give thanks for all that you do for us. And Lord, we, we, we want to, you to know that uh, in every situation, we know that you're there for us. And those that don't know Christ, now is the time. Ask, seek and knock and Christ will be there for you. So Lord, we just thank you that uh, you've done all of this for us. And we ask that, that you, you bless us through this coming week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Um, for what's turning, going to turn out to be part two of this message. God bless you and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.